Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Lane, and today I'm going to be telling you how a laser projector works. The first step to understanding how a laser projector works is understanding how a laser works. I'm going to be telling you specifically about this laser pointer. Um, now this is a standard laser pointer. It is green, so a little bit powerful than maybe a red one. Um, and uh, because of that, this is going to be the main one we'll be using. Um, because, you know, we really want to be able to see what's going on. And it's the best for a video presentation um, because you, know, you can see it well. Um, this is, um, you know, it's not safe, but I mean, it's not going to burn anything or anything like that. It is actually, I ordered it online. It's for playing with cats. So it should be uh, fairly safe compared to some other lasers that might be used for engraving or, um, you know, setting fire to things or popping balloons or something like that. So LASER is actually an acronym. It stands for Light Amplified by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Radiation, that kind of sounds scary. It's, it's really not in this case. So a laser pointer such as this one um, has three main components. Um, in this half, um, there is the power supply. In the black part in this half, uh, there is the lasing medium. And the silver tip um, is where the resonator is. Now, those sound like really big, complicated science words, but it's really quite simple. Um, the power supply in this case is um, uh, just two AAA batteries. Uh, really simple. Um, basically, when I press this button, um, it lets the power from the AAA batteries go to the lasing medium. Now, the lasing medium in different lasers can be uh, a variety of different things like gases, liquids, um, or like sometimes different uh, rubies, types of rocks. Um, I don't know what it is in this specific one, um, but the the lasing medium is what gives it its color. Um, and I believe the lasing medium uh, is what uh, kind of determines how bright a given color might be. Um, so when the power goes from the batteries and the power supply uh, to the lasing medium in here, um, the lasing medium emits that radiation. And that radiation is the light that uh, we see. And so uh, the, the radiation goes from the lasing medium to the resonator. And the resonator basically makes it so there's not just a huge, uh, just like light everywhere, basically. This, you know, light radiation just everywhere. Um, it makes it into that, you know, powerful beam that we see. Uh, and so the resonator, there are two little mirrors. Um, and so the light goes in there and it bounces back and forth and back and forth until it's that powerful pointed beam. And then when we hit this button, it shoots out just like that. And that is how a laser works. So now that I've explained how this laser pointer creates its beam, I should probably tell you what a laser projector is, because that's really what my project is on, not this. So a laser projector, in its simplest definition, is a device that takes a solid laser beam and moves it very, very fast to create patterns on a surface. So how does it do that exactly? Well, that's my essential question. So we'll be exploring that throughout this video in, in a minute, but before we get into that, I'd like to explain how our brain can see the patterns. Because if our eyes told our brain what was going on every instant, we wouldn't see patterns at all. We would just see a dot moving really fast. So something called the persistence of vision helps us out with this. The persistence of vision basically means that our eyes only tell our brain what's going on every 13 milliseconds. Now, that's a, an extremely short amount of time. And we see most things normally with that persistence of vision. But technology, like machines and computers, can throw stuff out of our eyes 
faster than every 13 milliseconds. And that's when we start to see things that aren't technically actually happening. Persistence of vision is what makes movies and animations and even any YouTube video possible. Because those things are all just images that are thrown at us faster than our persistence of vision. So we see movement. And that's what's going on with a laser projector. It moves the laser so fast that we just see an image of where it's gone. So to explore how a laser projector works, I set out to build one of my own. Um, now, the main effect that I want to achieve is something called the liquid sky effect. And that is not just a pattern on a wall. Uh, that is through smoke. And that's what I have in the room right now. That's how you can see the beam. Um, but what a, the liquid sky effect is on the wall, it's just a line. I thought that would be pretty simple. Um, so to get started on this project, I ordered a kit, a geometrical laser projector kit. And uh, why don't we go check that out right now? So this is the kit I got, and it's a pretty, you know, cool little kit. Um, it's a little worse for wear um, at the moment. It was in my backpack for a while, but I got the use I needed to out of it. Um, so first I'll explain mechanically how what's going on. Uh, so there are these three motors here, and there are mirrors on each of them, or a mirror. And I'll explain more about those mirrors in a minute. Uh, but then those are connected to this control box, and there are switches to turn each motor on or off. And then these knobs control the speed of each motor. So um, the way that this creates patterns is in the design of the mirrors. So the mirrors are not actually you know, flat on the plane here. They are actually slanted. And now, obviously, this is a big exaggeration. Um, but if you point a laser at one of those, as you turn the motor, because of the slant of the mirror, the point of the laser will go around in a circle. And that's how it creates designs. So obviously, if you just have one motor on, you create a circle. But as you add these other two mirrors um, and change the speed of the motor and stuff, you can create some pretty interesting designs. However, I didn't get my line. I didn't get my liquid sky effect. Um, there were things that were similar to the liquid sky effect, uh, but it wasn't really the same. I wanted it to be wider, and uh, it just wasn't really cutting it for me. And I wasn't really sure what to do at first, until I stumbled across a YouTube video that told me exactly what I needed to know. I needed a galvanometer. Um, and I ended up getting a kit, uh, a, another kit, uh, with a galvanometer in it. And uh, why don't we go over to that kit? and I'll explain more of what's going on there. So this is the galvanometer kit that I got. And a galvanometer in its basic definition is just something that reads how much power is given to it. Um, but 
cool thing about a galvanometer is that it can give that information to a fast moving motor. And so these here are the two galvanometer motors. Um, so there are a lot of things about this kit that I don't understand. You know, there are these very complex circuit boards. Um, but how I understand it is that there are basically programs in these circuit boards. This is the main control circuit board uh, that kind of houses everything. You can connect different things to this circuit board to uh, kind of control the galvanometer motors. Um, but my guess is that what's programmed in here is uh, what electrical current to give to these two motors. Um, so this, as I said, is the main control circuit board, and these two are the circuit boards that connect directly to the motors. Uh, so if you turn this on, these will be moving very fast, so fast that if a laser is given to it, it will travel at the speed that we need it to, to see patterns. And so what we have here is an X axis and a Y axis. So we basically have a coordinate plane or grid that we can display patterns on. Um, so this came with a bunch of pre-programmed things. So it basically just gives preset values to the motors, which will then make cool patterns on the walls. Um, and one of those is a line, but it's not really something that stays on a line. So what I did is I literally just unplugged the y-axis, uh, this mirror right here, this motor, I unplugged it and just let the other one move back and forth and it gave me a line. I had my line <laughs> and that, that was truly a magical moment right there. I had finally gotten my line, um, but then I also plugged the y-axis back in and got some really cool footage to show you guys. And uh, without further ado, here it is.